Mantras of the Divine Mother Date 12th December Our Divine Mother says At every moment one must know how to lose everything in order to gain everything to shed the past as a dead body and be reborn into a greater plentitude with my blessing says our divine mother words of our divine mother from the collective works of our divine mother volume 15 topic work Question, sweet mother, how can I offer my work for this? Our Divine Mother says, usually one works for one's own profit and satisfaction. Instead of that, one should work to serve the Divine and express His will. Whatever is our work and whatever we do, we must do it sincerely, honestly, scrupulously. not in view of any personal profit but as an offering to the divine with an entire consecration of our being if this attitude is sincerely kept in all circumstances whenever we need to learn something to do the work more effectively the occasion to acquire this knowledge comes to us and we have only to take advantage of the opportunity Our Divine Mother says, Now that you are about to take your first steps on the path of action, it is time to decide whether you will consecrate your life to your own personal interest or whether you will make an offering of it for the accomplishment of the work assigned by the Divine. In either case, the field of action remains the same, but the The spirit in which it is done is totally different. It must not be forgotten that the offering is made to the divine's work and not to any human enterprise. So, the only thing that can be done is to express some appreciation in a few words. Next question, sweet mother, what are the steps to follow for sadhana and silence of the mind? For this our Divine Mother says, Do work as sadhana. You offer to the Divine the work you do to the best of your capabilities and you leave the result to the Divine. Second point, Try to become conscious first above your head, keeping the brain as silent as possible. If you succeed and the work is done in that condition, then it will become perfect. Be faithful to your ideal and dedicate your work to the divine. Work for the divine and you will feel an ineffable joy filling your being. Disinterested work done for the divine is the surest means of progressing. Disinterested work, work done with no other motive than of doing as well as possible the divine's work. Question Sweet Mother, how is one to know what the Divine's work is and how is one to work with the Divine? For this our Divine Mother sings, you have only to unite and identify yourself with the Divine. Next topic, this is a talk based upon the Mother's essays about transformation and what a child should do to always remember the Divine. Question, Sweet Mother, we want an integral transformation, the transformation of the body and all its activities, but there is an absolutely indispensable first step that must be accomplished before anything else can be undertaken, the transformation of the consciousness. However, this is only a beginning for the outer consciousness, the various planes and parts of the outer body, active being are transformed only slowly and gradually as a result of the inner transformation sweet mother why do i make a distinction between the integral transformation and the transformation of the consciousness which was mentioned earlier 
what is the connection between consciousness and the other parts of the being what are these other parts sweet mother for this our divine mother says this transformation of consciousness is something that comes to all who have practiced a yogic discipline and becomes aware of the divine presence or the truth of their being i don't say that many people have realized this but at least quite a few what is the difference between this experience and the integral transformation in the integral transformation both the outer nature and the inner consciousness are transformed the character the habit etc are completely changed as well as the thoughts and mental outlook on things our divine mother says yes but there is something which remains unchanged unless you take care persist in your effort what is it body consciousness then the sadhak says sweet mother what is the body consciousness what does our divine mother says the vital consciousness of course the physical consciousness as a whole but then in this physical consciousness as a whole there is the physical mind a mind that is occupied with all the ordinary things and responds to everything around you there is also the vital consciousness which is the awareness of sensations impulses enthusiasms and desires finally there is the physical consciousness itself the material consciousness the body consciousness and that is the one which has so far never been entirely transformed the global overall consciousness of the body has been transformed that is one can throw off the bondage of the thought of habits that one no longer considers inevitable it has been changed but what remains to be changed is the consciousness of the cells there is a consciousness in the cells it is what we call the body consciousness and it is wholly bound up with the body our divine mother says this consciousness has much difficulty in changing because it is under the influence of collective suggestion which is absolutely opposed to the transformation so one has to struggle with this collective suggestion not only with the collective suggestion of the present but with the collective suggestion which belongs to the earth consciousness as a whole the terrestrial human consciousness which goes back to the earliest moment of man that has to be overcome before the cells can be spontaneously aware of the truth of the eternity of matter Of course until now those who have achieved this conscious transformation who are aware of the eternal and infinite life within themselves in the depths of their being must in order to preserve this consciousness constantly refer back to the inner experience return to the inner contemplation live in a sort of more or less constant meditation and when they come out of the meditation their outer nature is pretty much what it was before and their way of thinking and reacting is not very different unless they give up action altogether but in that case the inner realization this transformation of the consciousness is helpful only for the person who has achieved it but it does not change the condition of matter or the earthly life in the least for this transformation to succeed all human beings even all living beings as well as their material environment must be transformed otherwise things will remain as they are an individual experience cannot change the terrestrial life this is the essential difference between the old idea of transformation that is the becoming conscious with the psychic being and the inner life and transformation as we conceive it and speak of it not only an individual or a group of individuals or even all individuals but life the overall consciousness of this more or less developed material life have to be transformed with such a transformation we shall have the same misery the same calamities and the same atrocities in the world a few individuals will escape from it by their psychic development but the general mass will remain in the same state of misery question sweet mother if only the inner consciousness is changed won't some impurities still remain in the outer being 
for this are divine mother says yes of course that is the essential difference between our yoga and the old yogic disciplines which dealt only with the inner consciousness the old belief used to say and some people interpret the bhagavad gita in this way that there is no fire without smoke no life without ignorance in life that is the common experience but it is not our idea is it we know by experience that if we go down into the subconscious lower than the physical consciousness into the subconscious and even lower still into the inconscient we can find in ourselves the origin of atavism of what comes from our early education and the environment in which we live and this gives a kind of special characteristic to the individual to his outer nature and it is generally believed that we are all born like that and we will stay like that but by going down into the subconscious into the inconscient one can trace the origin of this formation and undo what has been done change the moments and reactions of the ordinary nature by a conscious and deliberate action thus really transform one's character this is not a common achievement but it has been done so one may assert not only that it can be done but it has been done it is the first step towards the integral transformation but after that there remains the transformation of the cells which i mentioned earlier there is an article by sri aurobindo in one of the bulletins which describes the various stages through which the entire physical being can be changed and this is what so far has been done does the inconscient in oneself belong to the individual being or to the earth was the next question a divine mother says the inconscient is not individualized and when you go down into the inconscient into yourself it is the inconscient of the matter one can say that each individual has his own inconscient for that would already be a beginning of individualization and when you go down into the inconscient it is perhaps not the universal but at least the terrestrial inconscient the light the consciousness that comes down into this inconscient in order to transform it must necessarily be a consciousness that is close enough to be able to touch it it is not possible to conceive of a light the supramental light for example that would have the power to individualize the inconscient but through a conscious individualized being this light can be brought down into the inconscient and gradually make it conscious a divine mother says first of all it is the subconscious that has to become conscious and indeed the main difficulty of the integral transformation is that things are constantly rising up from the subconscious you think you have gotten a certain moment under control anger for example you try very hard to control your anger and succeed to some extent then suddenly it rises up again for some reason unknown to you as if you hadn't done anything at all and you have to start all over again if it were tra- the transform part of the being going back to its old ways it would be more depressing it is not like that it is the material part the material life which is sustained supported so as to say in by a subconscious life and this subconscious is beginning to get individualized around some people it has certain affinities with a kind of subconscious somewhat like our own and that is where things you have repressed or thrown out of your nature go to one fine day they rise up again but if you are able to bring the light into the subconscious and make it conscious this will no longer happen these are the words of our divine mother